By the time a student has completed Algebra 1, they should be very familiar with plotting a parabola. In this parabola, the equation is y is equal to 4x minus x squared. I created the sketch in SOLIDWORKS. The parabola intersects the x-axis at 0, 0, and 4, 0. Let's create a parabola in SOLIDWORKS. The parabola sketch tool is not on the main toolbar. So I'm going to select the front plane to open up a new sketch. Click Sketch, click Tools, click Sketch Entities. Under Sketch Entities is Parabola. Click Parabola, click a position below the origin, drag upward, click a position to the left of the origin, and drag across. It is a two-click function. I'm going to dimension the distance between the two endpoints of the parabola as 20. But notice I have not constrained the geometry to my x-axis. I right-click Select, click the endpoints of the parabola and the origin, and select Horizontal. Next, I will constrain the vertical points. I pick the loci of the parabola and the origin and select Vertical. Now my parabola is symmetrical about the y-axis. I need to add some additional dimensions. From the origin to the maximum point of the parabola, I place a dimension and enter 60. In word problems, students will come across numbers that are bigger than 4 or 16 in perfect squares, so you want to make sure that they understand how to sketch these parabolas. I'm also going to close off my parabola because I need to define where my parabola is bounded. I'll use a sketch line to do that. Next, I will create a center line. This will become my axis of revolution. From the origin to the endpoint of the center line is 25. Click Features, click Revolve Boss Base. The parabola is revolved around the center line to create a parabolic solid. Select. Now I'll suppress my parabola and return to my original sketch of 4x minus x squared. This parabola will revolve around a line y is equal to 6. For this parabolic solid, I have some more information that I can calculate. Under Tools, Section Properties, if I select on the sketch, which is located below the Revolve feature, and then click Recalculate, SOLIDWORKS will calculate for me the area underneath the parabola bounded by the x-axis. That is because I sketched a line coincident with the x-axis. I can calculate what the area is also if I integrate the parabola from 0 to 4. If I'm in an algebra class, you could sketch on graph paper and approximate the, the area to be 10. In this case, I get an exact solution which matches SOLIDWORKS numerical solution. Besides section properties, I can look at mass properties which include volume. Under Tools, Mass Properties, the volume is calculated. By the time a student reaches Calculus 2, there are different ways to calculate analytically the volume of a parabolic solid. Usually, they involve a washer or shallow disk method, and it becomes quite a challenge for students to visualize what this volume contains. In this example, I'm going to go from the y is equal to 6 line and subtract the relationship that occurs between a sketch of a rectangle that I make between the axis of revolution and the parabola. What I'm actually looking at is a rectangle with a point on the parabolic curve. With mass properties, SOLIDWORKS will calculate the moment of inertia, center of mass, and centroid. 